read widely. Of course, reading helps to build your vocabulary. I've included some book recommendations by different authors here because I think it's really important to read wide, read a wide range of, um, of books, age appropriate books, and there are different books available depending on the age of the reader. So what I found is that even the very best, um, even the very uh, basic children's picture books, that's books for early readers, even board books that are made for babies and toddlers can translate and transmit novel ideas, new ideas. Books like Enos Story can help children see life from another perspective. Books like Anna Hibiscus or Anike Leko can help show children different goals to achieve. And I know that children, some children may find this difficult to believe, but reading actually helps with stress reduction. You can actually read to relax. Trust them. I know, right? And of course, when you read, it helps you to stay up to date. You find out things that you do not know. There's so much knowledge out there about a myriad of, of, um, of experiences. And by reading, you stay up to date and you stay in the know. You get to, um, you have an idea of what to aspire to, what to stretch out and reach out for. It gives you the keys to life, basically. Somebody once said that any secret can be found in a book. So these are all reasons why it is important to read. And now I wanna to talk to you about some people who are great readers and great achievers. The first gentleman that you see on your screen, Professor Chinua Achibe, the late Professor Chinua Achibe. I'm sure many of you have read his books, but can anybody tell me the name of any one of his books? If you know the answer, please type it into the chat box. And um, afterwards, I'm sure we have some, um, some aunties and uncles helping us check the chat box for the right answers. But if you said things fall apart, you're absolutely correct. If you said no longer at ease, you are absolutely correct. If you said arrow of God, you are absolutely correct. Uh, Professor Chinuachibe has written books that have been translated to a myriad of languages. He's read by people from across the world. And he's able to achieve, he was able to achieve all of this because he was a great reader. Another great reader, a young lady by the name of Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, I'm sure a lot of us have heard of her. She has written many books. Now, does anybody know the names of any of the books written by Chimamanda? Again, you can type out your answers. All right. Now, I'm sure if you said purple hibiscus, you're correct. Americana, half a yellow sun, all of these fabulous books, again, read by people from across the world, translated into many different languages, and even made into movies. Chimamanda has been able to achieve all of this by reading. She's an avid reader. Now, can we see the photo of the three ladies in the winter sports gear? It's at the bottom of the screen. Does anybody know? It would be a real big surprise if you know the names of these three ladies. But I'll go ahead and give you a clue. They represented Nigeria in the Olympics. But guess what? They represented Nigeria in the Winter Olympics, in the winter sports. They got medals in, bob, in the bobsled um, game. Why bobsled? Why is this so um, dramatic? It's dramatic because they come from a hot country, a country that does not typically have snow. Yet these ladies excelled and they were able to gain international recognition because of an idea. Where did they get the idea from? They got the idea from a book. They are avid readers. At least one of them, Dr. Shen Wadigun, she has a PhD, she's a chiropractor. She reads extensively. And um, I know that Ukwama is a graduate of the University of Houston. She's an avid reader as well. And I'm sure Ngozi is too. 
or perhaps I've gotten them mixed up, but I know that they are all avid readers. And they got the idea of how to um, improve their chances of one, becoming um, team members, two, representing their country, three, winning a medal, by going for a sport that there wasn't much competition. In other words, they expanded the field and they did that by reading, by getting the idea and by implementing it. And of course, by being brave. Now, there's another picture on your screen. Can you tell me the name of this gentleman? If you said Professor Wale Shoyinka, you are absolutely correct. Now he, amongst many other things, is a Nobel laureate. Does anybody know what a Nobel laureate or who a Nobel laureate is? A Nobel laureate, and I'm sure many of us got the answer right, a Nobel laureate is somebody who has won the Nobel Prize. And every year, only a handful of those prizes are given out to people from different countries across the world. And imagine a Nigerian, a Yoruba man, right, whose first language I'm sure is Yoruba, winning a Nobel Literature Prize in English. He's able to achieve that. He was able to achieve that because he is a reader. This is why reading is important. Now I'm gonna move on to the next slide and tell you about different types of people. People with sustainable wealth are able to sustain their wealth. Many people can get wealth, but not everybody can sustain wealth. But those who are able to sustain their wealth are readers. For example, Oprah apparently has a monthly book club. Every month they read a different book. They read and discuss a different book. Leaders of sustainable organizations, that's organizations that last from one generation to another generation. They read. Innovators and disruptors, people who change the way the world um, does everything, they read. If you can please uh, continue with the, with the slide, thank you. They read. Now apparently, the young man that you see at the bottom of your screen, right there, founder of Facebook. Apparently he reads a book. Let's see if I can see this properly now. Every two weeks. People who shape nations, they read. Apparently Bill Gates reads as many as 50 books a year. This is an example of why it is important to read. Now there's lots of different types there are lots of different types of reading materials. You can read fiction books, non-fiction books, biography, comics. Yes, there are some very good comics. Anike Eleko is a great example of a graphic novel that delivers a very powerful message. Very, very well written, well edited, beautiful illustrations. Story about a young girl from a, a low income background who desperately wanted an education and how people ride around to help her. I highly recommend the book. It's written by Alaba Onojin and Sandra Jabode. So magazines, there's some excellent magazines out there. Parents, encourage your children to read magazines like the National Geographic magazine, for example. Lots of great ideas there. Fantasy books, horror books, self-help books, you know, ad academic books, health books, cooking books, books about exercises. And then there are chapter books for older, more mature, more advanced readers, and there are picture books like the ones I write for younger readers and so on. Next slide, please. So there's lots of different types of reading material. In addition, there are lots of different formats. So there's the printed uh, book, you know, books that you physically touch and feel, which I love. But then there are e-books that people like. People like reading online, like all the books that you've received for registering today. Thank you so much for being here and supporting this and, be, and registering. Like the books that you're receiving, those are e-books. There are hardback books, there are paper books, there are book apps um, like the Okada book app, there are audio books. There's some people who don't have the time, they feel they don't have the time to read so they can listen to books instead. You can have podcasts, there are abridged versions, um, there are teen versions of books like for example one of my favorite books Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. 
there's an abridged version for children and there's a, an, another version for teenagers. If you have difficulty reading small print, you can get large print books and you can get braille books that also help. And you can get books in different languages. Like one of my books, Why Do You Wash Your Hands? The one we're reading today is available in English, Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna round off by telling you a few productive reading habits. Now try and remember these reading habits just in case there's a question at the end with a prize, okay? There are five productive reading habits that I'm gonna share with you today. Number one, read purposefully. When you're going to read, please keep hitting the, um, keep hitting the forward button. In Kitchi, thanks. When you're gonna read, don't read trash. Don't feast only on gossip magazines. Read books about, keep pressing the button, please. Read books about knowledge enhancement. Read biographies. Read books on improvement, how-to books, and so on. Kindly keep pressing the um, forward button. Keep pressing. Thank you. Please move to the next slide. Thanks. Read books about number two, if we can go back to productive habit number two. Thanks. Read books that are uplifting. Read books that show you things from a different perspective. Productive habit number two, have a home library. Now, some researcher found out that, you know, did a study of various um, uh, wealthy people, and he discovered that one thing that was consistent amongst the different people that were wealthy, sustainably wealthy, I might add, is that they all had home libraries. Now, it doesn't have to be a vast, you know, mahogany um, room set apart with millions of books. It can just be books on a shelf. It can be um, a table in a corner somewhere and you can designate that as your home library. So productive reading habit number one is to read purposefully and number two is to have a home library. Productive reading habit number three is to spend less time watching TV or randomly surfing the internet. Of course, there's lots of useful material on the web, but what they found, again, that same researcher, I believe, found that people who are sustainably wealthy actually watched less television per day than people with, um, in lower income brackets. So productive reading habit number three is spend less time watching TV or randomly surfing the web. Number four is have a daily must do. So we all are familiar with our own schedules. Set yourself something that you know you can achieve, whether it's to read a newspaper every day or to read a self-improvement blog, blog a day, or if you have a book and you say, I'm gonna read one chapter a day, or you can set yourself a goal that I'm gonna read a story aloud every day. I'm gonna read bedtime story to my children every day. Or if you're an older sibling, you can say, I'm gonna read a bedtime story to my younger siblings one a day. So set yourself a daily must do. And productive reading habit number five is convert random time. Now, what do I mean by that? Read everywhere. Read in the bathroom, in the dining room, while you're in a waiting room, if you're on your lunch break, you know, in your car riding to school, on an airplane, obviously after COVID and when airports are open again and when schools are open again. But whenever you can, read at bedtime. If you're doing exercise on a stationary bike or a treadmill, take that opportunity to read. So let's summarize the productive reading habits, shall we? Oh, yeah. So these are examples of books that I highly recommend. Some of the books are by me and some of the books are by other authors. Because we don't have that much time, I won't be able to tell you why I selected each of these books, but every single one of these books has um, an advantage um, for, uh, for your child. For example, A Fun ABC by Shadi Fadikwe has something hidden in every single page that starts with the letter of the alphabet. And it's good for the child to spend time searching through the image, hunting for all the things that start with the letter A and so on and so forth. And Ike Leko, I've already told you about. Afro by Okechuku Ophili, brilliant book. It's a fairy tale set in uh, Africa. It's like Rapunzel and Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty all rolled into one. 
Toby Bakes a book, uh, Toby Bakes a Cake is one of my new books. Diary of a Toddler is a great book for teaching children how to tell the time. Okay, next slide, please. For the advanced readers, so the previous slide is obviously for the younger readers. This slide is for books I recommend for advanced readers. So my favorite, um, I love all these books and I've read all these books, but my favorite here that I'm gonna uh, draw attention to is The Girl Who Can by Professor Ama Adu. She's a Ghanaian professor, I, I think, um, um, yeah, she's a Ghanaian professor. And um, I recommend this book because it's a collection of short stories that shows life from the perspective of, of different people. And I actually believe that this book should be recommended reading for all teenage boys, because I think it would help them um, understand and have greater empathy for women and the things that women do, so that as they grow older, it helps to guide um, their behavior. If you're thinking about um, going into public service, I recommend The Accidental Public Servant. If you want to know more about money management, I recommend The Smart Money Woman. Purple Hibiscus is great because it shows how a young person um, can make a difference despite having very strong, domineering older people um, present. A young person can still have a voice and can still make a difference. Um, Best Served Cold is a great book if you love um, James Bond type uh, 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 thriller type books. It's set in Nigeria, parts in New York, parts in England. Excellent book. Um, Americana, that's my favorite um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie book. Fabulous. It's apparently being made into a movie. And of course, um, No Longer at Ease. But if you want to read um, the African trilogy all at once, it's also available as one book as well. You can read Things Fall Apart, No Longer at Ease, Arrow God, all as one book as well. So I highly recommend all of these books for the more mature, more advanced readers. So next slide. So to summarize, the five productive reading habits. Do you remember them? So we have number one is, if you can say them out loud with me where you are, number one, is to read purposefully. Purposefully. Be intentional when you read. Number two is have a home library. Number three is watch less TV, spend less time surfing the internet randomly. Number four, have a daily must do. Set yourself a goal. Every day I'm gonna read a chapter or every day I'm gonna read a bedtime story. Set yourself a goal. And number five is convert random time. Don't let any gap be wasted. We all have a finite amount of time on this earth. Make every moment count. Okay, so thank you so much for listening um, to this presentation. And Kechi, I'm gonna hand back over to you now. Thank you so much, Mrs. Olubumit Abodarin-Chalabi. I'm sure everybody has learned quite a lot this morning. The kids have, have learned why it's important to read, and even the parents have learned why they should engage their children with this book. Now, we'll go straight into the read-along session, and then um, after that, we'll take the Q&A. So we'll go straight into the read-along session now. Do you have any questions? Are there any questions from the floor? You are taking questions later. We'll take questions later. We'll do the read along session right now. Okay. Um, just give me a second to pull this up. Okay. All right. Um, once again, welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Happy Children's Day. And um, here we are with the good people at Union Bank and the Edu360 team um, who have organized this um, activity for children on Children's Day, a very productive and highly commendable activity. So the theme for today is read it once, read it twice, 
why is it, it is important to read. My name is Olubumi Abarani Talabi and I'm a children's picture book author. I've been invited to read um, my book, Why Do You Wash Your Hands? This book was released last year in October, uh, way before there was ever a COVID crisis. We had no idea that um, it would become so instrumental in encouraging people to wash their hands and in, in making people mindful of the, of the benefits of hand washing. So this book talks about why and when you should wash your hands, why you should wash your hands and when you should wash your hands. This book is a book of firsts. It's the first indigenous Nigerian children's picture book to come out simultaneously in four languages. So it came out in English, Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo all in October of last year. In addition, it's the first known indigenous Nigerian children's picture book to come out with stickers at the back. So the collector's item version that was released last year had stickers at the back. It had 80 stickers and it was the first known indigenous Nigerian children's picture book to have multilingual stickers. The stickers were in English, Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. Today, we are reading the English version. So the version that was released last year sold out and we reprinted the languages separately. So um, I believe the gift, the gift to you today is the, the um, English version of Why Do You Wash Your Hands? So if you have your copy, please open it up and read along with me. All right. So we're reading, why do you wash your hands? So Nkechi, I'm going to need your help with um, scrolling forward. So the story is set in an orphanage here in Lagos. Well, in Lagos, greetings to everyone who is from outside Lagos. If you're from outside Lagos, do please let us know where you are um, joining us from, all right? It'd be great to know um, which state you're, you're viewing from and, or which country, indeed, um, you're viewing from. Greetings and welcome. Thank you for being here. So it's set in an orphanage in um, Lagos. If you go to the next page, please. And um, it's in a neighborhood called CMS in Lagos. There's a, a little girl in the orphanage and she notices that um, Mama's about to start cooking. She's about to start making lunch. And before she starts um, cooking, she washes her hands. And the little girl asks, you know how kids can be, Mama, why do you wash your hands? And Mama replies, I wash my hands to remove dirt and germs. Germs make people sick. So the curious little girl says, when should I wash my hands, Mama? So Mama now calls all the children in the orphanage and she says, children, come and tell your sister when you wash your hands. So next slide, please. Now, when I read this book, prior to COVID, I would have book readings and there'd be lots and lots of children um, around. And this book would be, is written as a call and response. So I would read it as a call and response. So I would say a line and then the children would shout the next line, right? So you're in your homes and if your mummies and daddies allow you to, I'd like you to read along this book aloud with me. So I'm gonna say, every occasion before which and after which you should wash your hands. So when I say something like, after I use the toilet, I want you all to shout at the top of your lungs, if you can, I wash my hands. All right, are we ready? Yes, yeah. we are. Excellent, okay, so here we go. So I need you to read along with me, all right? After I use the toilet, I wash, wash my, my hands. hands. Okay, come on, I need to hear you over here. Next page, please. After I play outside, I wash, wash my, my hands. hands. Next, please. After I play with pets, I wash, wash my hands. Hands. After I cough or sneeze, I wash my 
hand. Of course, now, because of COVID, we're advised to cough into our elbow or elbow. our sleeve, all right? You do the dab cough, all right? After I change a diaper, I wash, wash my, my hand. hand. Okay, read along with me, all right? After I touch the bin, I wash, wash. my hands. After shaking hands, I wash, wash my, my hands. hands. Now remember, because of COVID, we're not shaking hands anymore, right? Okay, we're finding other ways to greet, like, hello, like, how you doing, and whatever. Some people even do the foot shake, right? Or the elbow bump or the, you know, just stay safe is what is very important. And if you do have to wash, uh, shake hands with someone, you just wash your hands afterwards, all right? So all here right. are the steps, okay? Water, so water next scrub rinse and dry before i eat my food i wash, wash my, my hands, hands. Say it with me before i eat my food i wash, wash my, my hands, hands. Next, please. Before I carry a baby, I wash, wash my, my hands. hands. Before I touch a wound, I wash, wash my hands. hands. Not forgetting under the fingernails. Before I touch my eyes, I wash, wash my hands. Hands. Before I take my medicine, I wash, wash my, my hands. If my palms look dirty, I just wash, wash my, my hands. Again, the steps, please shout this out loud with me, all right? Because saying things out loud, reading out loud, helps your memory. So, water, soak, water, water. scrub, rinse, rinse, and dry. Uh, and now the last page of the book. So, this again, Usually with my book readings, the children help me read this page really loudly, okay? So I ask the question, and then the children all shout the answer. So children, the answer to the question is, so that we don't get sick, all right? So I need you to shout it really loudly, so that we don't get sick after I ask the question, okay? Are we ready? Yes, we are. So, children... Why do you wash your hands so often? So, so that, that we, we don't, don't get, get sick. sick. Well done. That's Very awesome. well done. That was good reading. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Olubumi. Help. My pleasure. Yeah. So now we'll go straight into the Q and A session. Um, Before we do that, I just want to acknowledge some of the people that have been um, um, joining from different parts of the country. I see people from Kaduna, from Potakot, from um, Ibadan, from Enugu, from River State, from Cross River State. Welcome, 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 everyone from Lagos State, from Anambra, from Abuja. Wow, lots of people from Potakot. Woohoo! Great to see you. Great to see you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here. Oh, wow. Even from Kano. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone, for being here. From Ogun State. Thank you for being here. From Joss. Thank you. It's great to see you all. Thank you all for being here. Awesome. 
Thank you very much, Mrs. Talabi, and welcome to everyone again. Um, so we have a few you. questions. Is that? No, Ondo State. I'm acknowledging people okay. from okay. Yes. So we have a few questions. Um, one of them is, um, how do I wash my hands when I don't have any water? Okay, that's a very good question. Thankfully, if there's no water, you can use some hand sanitizer. You just get some hand sanitizer, rub it into your hands, and then as soon as you can, as soon as you have access to water and soap, please still wash your hands, all right? So in the absence of water, please use hand sanitizer. Welcome to those from South Africa as well. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Um, someone says, is it really appropriate to read in the bathroom? I remember that slide where you say whenever, oh, yeah. wherever oh, you yeah. find. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If, 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 listen to me. If you're a parent and you're trying to get your child to read, and if your child wants to sit down and read in the bathroom, I think the, the, the important thing is to get your child to read. If you want to read, you just go right ahead. Um, and read wherever you can. Some people spend a long time in the bathroom, useful reading time, rather than just sitting there. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Tellery. What age would you encourage parents to introduce their children to reading? I know some people say, oh, let them play till like they're two before they start reading, or let them play till okay. like they're three. So what, what age would you encourage people to introduce their children to reading? From the womb. From the womb. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. I know parents who read aloud, um, even when they're pregnant, they start reading. Um, the, the books I've read, yes, the books that I've read, um, like the baby book and what to expect when you're expecting and so on and so forth, they encourage you to start reading to your children even before the children start to walk or talk. Why? Because it has been shown, it has been proven that reading, reading in particular to children helps with cognitive development. It helps them to understand things quicker. It helps them to communicate um, with, um, with better ease, with greater ease, right? Okay. So imagine if you're a child and something has happened. You want to say what happened to you, but you are not able to because you do not have the words. Such children act out, they have tantrums, and it's not because the child is bad. It's because the child is frustrated. The child is trying to help make you understand that, look, auntie so-and-so did this to me. Uncle so-and-so did this to me. I don't like what this person did, but they don't have the words, right? So what you need to do is equip your children with words so okay. that they can construct sentences, so that they can communicate and tell you what is going on because they're still very much dependent on you for everything. And if they can't communicate with you, it can be rather frustrating. So please, okay. please, please encourage them to read and read to them from as young as, um, as you like, right? But before they walk, before they talk is highly recommended. Okay, another question. So um, um, someone says that she's been able to have her children read up until... Um, uh, up until when they become teenagers. And then from when they become teenagers, trying to get them to read is a struggle. So you've imposed times when they're supposed to be in the study and read, but they are not just having it. So how do you, in this case, what do you do to make these children actually read? Get age appropriate books. There are some excellent YA novels, YA young adult novels um, that are specifically for teenagers. Perhaps um, those teenagers that you mentioned are not getting age appropriate books. They're not getting books that interest them. There are books on absolutely every topic. Find the topic that interests your children and look for books that speak to that topic. Or when you go uh, to a bookshop, shop, take them with you and let them pick the book that they want or take them to a library and let them pick a book um, that they want. Perhaps the book you're picking for them is not the book that they want to read but every child is interested in something. My advice would be find out what the child is interested in and then find a book or books that speak to what that child is interested in. Please don't discount graphic novels. Um, don't push aside books that have um, pictures. 
um, don't assume that they're older than that. They shouldn't um, be reading that. There are some um, very appropriate, there's some very age appropriate um, graphic novels that are good for teenagers um, that you can um, consider getting them to, to read. All right, I hope that answers the question. Yes, I'm sure it does. Um, another question, um, Galaxy says, um, can you say children going to reading clubs will help the kids improve their reading, their reading, especially for parents who can be extremely busy? Absolutely. Reading clubs are excellent. Joining reading clubs, starting reading clubs. Actually, if you'll allow me, if there's time, I actually have 21 things that I advise parents to do. I have a list um, called... Um, um, how to get children interested in reading. Okay. And um, um, I 21 things that parents can do to encourage children to read. Okay. I'm um, sure but, you can send um, it to them as a little gift post. Yes. Or post if you visit webinar. my uh, Instagram handle, it's there. There's a post awesome. there on inspiring children to read. Um, you can just see all 21 points there um, on, um, on different things you can do to get them to read. Sorry, can you repeat your question again? The question you just asked me right now. Oh, um, the person was asking, sorry, this, this, give me a second. How we can get um, the children to join reading clubs. Yes, so reading clubs are very important. They're on my list of things to do to inspire and encourage children to read. We have excellent reading clubs in Lagos. There are reading clubs um, all over the country. In, in Kaduna, there's the Page Flippers Club. In Lagos, there's um, Bookworm Cafe. There's uh, Kids Literacy Circle. In Port Harcourt, there's INT Corner. Um, there in, in Abuja, there's Tabitha's Kids. There's lots of excellent reading clubs across the country. Um, that your children can join. And right now, uh, because of COVID, because of the lockdown, uh, because of the way things are right now, many of these reading clubs are actually online. Um, so your kids can join online um, and read a book a week uh, with other kids in uh, reading clubs. So yes, reading clubs are highly recommended. And another person is asking how he or she can make a two-year-old concentrate when reading to him. Two-year-olds are two-year-olds. Um, yeah. <laughs> two-year-olds have very short attention spans. The kinds of books that you want to read to a two-year-old are like um, Diary of a Toddler, like something big and colorful okay. that has very, 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 very few words and huge pictures. Two-year-olds are not interested in text-heavy books that take a long time to read. You want short, sweet children's picture books with big, bright illustrations. That will help the two-year-old. And don't try to get a two-year-old to sit for longer than five minutes um, to, to listen to a book because uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you're asking them to do something that they're probably not wired to do, all right? So you catch their attention by reading picture books, big, bright, colorful um, picture books with few words, lots and lots of images. Awesome. Um, um, this question is funny. Some people say eating chocolate while reading helps. How? <laughs> Wow, that's a new one. I have not heard that before. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. And I am going to try that out and I'll do my experiment and I'll let you know <laughs> if, if that works. Thank you for giving me a reason to eat chocolate. No, I've not heard that before, but I'm guessing that it has something to do perhaps with the sugar in the chocolate, but that can also be a bit detrimental if done in excess. Um, so I, the truth is I've never heard that before, um, but I'll go look it up and, um, and, and share my thoughts. Okay. Yeah. And then one more question before we round up says, hello, what are the recommended books for eight to 10 years old, please? Eight to ten. Um, if you go back to, um, if you go back to my slide, um, there's a page that has um, books there. What I found is um, you can try Anike Aleko right? You can try Cobb the Antelope um, for them. Cobb the Antelope by Mi Olubu Mi Abodari Talabi, Anike Leko by Alaba Onoji. Um, you can also try Enos Story as well by um, Olofin Chuade, I believe. Afro as well. 
Afro depends. If they're good readers, they may like Afro. If not, it may be too much for them. Anna Hibiscus is also very good. The Anna Hibiscus books are also very good for that age bracket as well. So those are four books I can recommend off the top of my head. I'm recommending Cobb the Antelope by me, by Alabao Nojin. I'm recommending um, Enos Story, and I'm recommending Afro. All right? And that's our last question. So thank you so much for being with us, Mrs. Talabi. We had a great time reading with you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, today we're excited to unveil our kids' proposition. It's called Union Infinity and Union Legend. Now, Union Infinity is for children between the ages of 0 and 12, and Union Legend is our teenagers' proposition for children between the ages of 13 and 18, created specially to imbibe the savings culture on your children, to teach your children to start saving now. All those monies that uncle, auntie gives to them um, to help just to let them know that those monies can be kept and they can start saving towards their future. We have amazing benefits, access to loans for school fees payments, free education insurance covers of up to 100,000 Naira. You can save in dollars. I know a lot of parents are worried about the inflation rate, so you can save in dollars as well and beat inflation. Um, milestone rewards. So when you're child saves consistently um, a minimum of 20,000 naira over a 12 month period he gets rewarded rewards for constantly saving a minimum of $200 over a 12 month period we have milestone birthday rewards as well so when you turn five you get a gift when you turn 10 you get a gift so we have all of these rewards that we've specially packaged for you we have this information going up on our social media pages at Union Bank NG on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. If you would like to open an account, please send an email to customer service at unionbanking.com and they will send you a form. Better still, you can visit our website, um, www.unionbanking.com forward slash union infinity or www.unionbanking.com forward slash union legend and you will see all the details you need there. You also see links to download all that you need. Thank you once again for joining us. Um, and now I'll say bye-bye. Have an amazing Children's Day celebration. Um, Mrs. Olubumi, if you'd like to say bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great um, spending time with you. Thank you for all of the brilliant questions. And thank you to everybody from across Africa and across Nigeria. Thank you for joining us today. Have a brilliant and beautiful Children's Day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.